Uh, Sabrina, I think I can probably lead off with that. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Max Jong. I'm a managing director here at Risk Management Advisors. Um, and, and we have really the good fortune of having most of our new clients uh, get introduced to us from professional advisors. So these are brokers and consultants and CPA firms, tax attorneys, and oftentimes they're asking questions about what constitutes a, uh, a good candidate to, to, to set up a captive. Um, so maybe I can answer this a, a couple different ways. One, starting off with sort of the no-brainers, um, the, the, the type of clients that we think definitively need to explore uh, the use of the captive. Uh, the first set of these candidates really are the ones that are spending, call it seven figures or multi-seven figures of annual premiums. And it could be in workers' comp or, or property or general liability type of risks. Uh, but when you have that type of um, expenditure, it really does make some sense to, to incorporate the use of a captive uh, because ultimately over a long period of time, it, it, it gives you a, a much more efficient way to finance your risks. Um, an, another no-brainer category would be the folks who have, call it a couple hundred employees and up. Uh, these are people that um, are, are covered under a group medical plan. Uh, we're very bullish on self-funded type of options within group medical. And if you have your own captive insurance company, one of the fastest growing uh, ways to utilize it would be to position that in a layer of the medical stop loss. So with these clients, they are comfortable in taking on a certain level of risk, but they don't want to bet the farm, if you will, on their group medical benefits. So the captive can, can help with uh, potentially a layer of that type of, of coverage. Um, then you've got folks who ha have for example, very large property portfolios um, have exposure to a lot of real estate, whether it's commercial, industrial, or multifamily. And uh, here in California in particular, uh, you, you have uh, a lot of earthquake risks that people choose not to buy commercial insurance for. So, so those types of um, candidates, we think $20 million plus would be a great place to start. Uh, again, there's exceptions to the rule, but a lot of our clients who have that type of property portfolio tends to start layering on their property risks and their captives. Um, and, and then you, you now sort of have the, exclu the, the, the exceptions, if you will. Um, there are certainly clients of ours who don't have the scale that I just described, but they have very unique uh, business purpose for setting up a captive. Um, as an example, we have manufacturers who want to extend um, extended warranties uh, to the products that they're selling. And those types of warranties tend to have fairly low loss ratios and these clients know how to replace or, or, or uh, fix parts fairly inexpensively. So for them to, to, to use that as a foundational piece of their captive makes a lot of sense. Um, and then you have examples of, you know, I mentioned multifamily uh, apartment building owners, uh, their tenants are buying renter's insurance, for example. And that is a very, very low uh, loss ratio. Last I looked, I think it was under 15%. So why would you have your renters buy insurance that's very profitable from third-party carriers when you can potentially issue that yourself and capture that underwriting profit? So there's a lot of, it depends type of uh, answers to, to, to that question, but um, certainly scale and, and um, having a meaningful amount of you know, complex risks uh, more than justifies that. Yeah, I was going to add to that, um, you know, on, on the renter side, you know, we're working with a company right now that's a, a nationwide self-storage facility and putting a program in for them is just going to be a brand new profit center that they've never been able to re uh, realize. Uh, but, you know, Max brought up a good point, you know, generally speaking, the premiums that we're looking for when we're looking at traditional risk, you know, it's in the million, two million and up category. But, you know, I can point to a client that we, we engaged last year where the premiums are actually very low. So you just can't look at the premium. You have to really look at the policy and identify what's going on. So when, once we did that, we realized the premium for a specific, um, you know, auto uh, wholesaler was about $300,000, but the deductible was already there. So they already had a half a million dollar deductible plus you know, just under 5,000 per vehicle. So just because the premium wasn't high doesn't mean the risk already doesn't exist. So, so we formed a captive for that risk as well.